everybody welcome back to my channel today i'm going to teach you how to do a no-bake dessert called dirt now there's very very a lot of variations on this but almost all of them include oreo cookies this is the family size oreo but you really only need the regular pack um, you're going to need eight ounces of cream cheese and this is just for a single um, batch but sometimes you need a double batch um, one small 3.64 ounce box of pudding that's vanilla uh, one eight ounce tub of Cool Whip, and then you'll need two cups of milk to make the pudding. Um, and this recipe is super simple, and you can switch out the Oreos for Vienna Fingers if you want to do sand. Um, and then some people like chocolate pudding, but this is the way my sister taught me how to make it, and it's everybody's favorite. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the pudding. So if you've never made instant pudding before, it's really quite simple, you just whisk the instant pudding powder into two cups of milk if you're doing pudding because um, the recipe will tell you a cup and a half if you're doing pie filling whatever but we're just going to make the standard recipe two cups of milk and whisk in the vanilla pudding and then you're going to set that aside and now I'm showing you if you don't have a blender or a food processor then you could take Oreos in a Ziploc bag and just use some heavy utensil like a meat mallet this is the back of an ice cream scoop um, a metal ice cream scoop and I'm just beating the Oreos to a crumb like consistency and when the instructions my sister gave me was put them in the blender and grind them until they look like dirt but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put them in the little food processor chopper thing that Lisa has and we're gonna have to do them in batches because it's not going to hold all of the cookies um, because it's the family pack and you uh, is 20 ounces and we need 14 ounces we're going to go ahead and just take two rows out of the family pack if you happen to buy them um, but you can also put extra cookies in if you want or less cookies more cookies however you like like it but this is how we've always made it and it's traditionally wonderful <laughs> um, so as you see once you put them in the food processor or the blender at home i only have a blender i don't have a food processor um, you just grind them up until they're very fine um, and oddly enough there aren't any big chunks of like frosting, the, the, the cookie cream. It blends in to the, um, the cookies and it's just left with just crumbs, which is kind of wild, but fun. Um, and I also wanted to tell you that we have made this um, for so many occasions, but what we like to do is we like to buy a new flower pot, wash it really well, make the dirt in a flower pot, and then you can insert artificial flowers in the dirt. Um, you just wrap the stem of artificial flowers in plastic wrap and um, you stick it in the middle of the flower pot and that's how you conserve it and if you make sand with Vienna fingers then you can put it in a bucket um, you know at the Dollar Tree you can get like a sand bucket with a shovel attached well that's how you can use it and you can actually serve it with the sand bucket um, so now that I've round up most of the cookies, I'm taking the softened cream cheese. Like you want to leave your cream cheese out if possible. I have also made this with whipped cream cheese. It, um, the, the recipe does say that when you blend your cream cheese in there, you will have chunks of cream cheese left. And I actually find that um, to be like the, my favorite way to eat it. Because every once in a while, you get like almost like a, a tart kind of chunk of cream cheese in this really, really sweet pudding um, cookie mixture and I, I really like that balance but if you find that not to be your favorite you know you can use whipped cream cheese if you want um, or you can use a hand mixer to process it as well all right and as you can see I'm just taking chunks of it and I'm just using the hand beater because I want to show you guys you don't even need anything electric if you don't have um, you can beat the cookies with a mallet you can just use a regular hand whisk and I only have this two times speed just for the length of the video because it takes about, um, it took me about 20 minutes and um, the video is, you know, about 16 left over or whatever. But anyhow, I'm just doing a couple of chunks at a time and then I'm mixing them through. And at first I'm just trying to break up the big chunks of cream cheese. But I was explaining to Lisa, because you're not heating the cream cheese, it really doesn't dissolve in the pudding. Um, even when you put it with a hand mixer, it will still leave these little chunks in there. Um, just not as big as the chunks you get when you mix it with the hand whisk. All right, and I'm going to transfer it to a big mixing bowl because we're going to add the Cool Whip. 
And again, using the rubber spoonula, my favorite rubber spatulas are like silicone spatulas. They always clean um, the containers out really well. So you can make sure you get every ounce of nook and cranny of, of mix or whatever you're making. Um, so I transferred to a giant mixing bowl. And then we're going to take the um, Cool Whip, which of course, you know, if you've ever worked with Cool Whip or a non-dairy creamer, it can be generic Cool Whip. Um, you leave it in the refrigerator for, uh, depending on the Cool Whip brand and how frozen it was when you got it, you leave it in the refrigerator to defrost. So we've left the cream cheese out and the Cool Whip in the refrigerator. And as you can see there, that's the little chunks of cream cheese that are going to be in there is what you want. So I'm just mixing it up to break up um, the chunks to be even smaller. Now my favorite tip to do, and um, this is just my own personal preference, is I like to take one like dollop, a big dollop of Cool Whip. And that does help break up some of the um, cream cheese a little bit more. Um, and it makes this big smooth, it makes it a bit smoother. So once I've done that and I've whisked it up really well, and you can see there's still plenty of pieces of cream cheese in there. Um, then we're gonna fold in the rest of the Cool Whip. All right, make sure you get all of the goodies off of your whip. Okay, because I, you know, no man left behind, right? And since we're going to use the whole container of, of Cool Whip, um, you don't have to worry about cleaning your your um, your rubber spatula. You just put it right in there; it's fine. And I'm taking the rest of the container, and I'm just going to fold it in, so I don't have to do this in sections. We just take a little bit in front and um, blend it in, and then it makes it a little bit easier to fold in the rest of the Cool Whip. So if you've ever folded before, you kind of take your spool, or if you never folded before, you kind of take your spoon and down the middle and fold it over and scoop around and you constantly move your bowl and that's how you fold. Now when I make dirt, I don't mind that there's even streaks of Cool Whip um, from here and there. So I don't blend it in so it's like completely combined. But you can, that's your choice. Um, so when you make dirt, you know, I said you we've served it in flower pots before but you know if you've ever seen um, Halloween is coming and you can use dirt to make like a cemetery um, where you just take uh, peppers from Milano cookies and they are cute little headstones or you could take uh, gummy worms and it you know in individual cups for the kids and um, you can serve gummy worms like they're crawling, crawling out of the dirt there's just a couple of really cute ways on Pinterest where you can serve this so I've put um, a third of my cookies down on the bottom and I'm taking half of my um, cream cheese mixture okay and I'm doing cookies pudding cookies pudding cookies so you want to start with cookies and end with cookies so um, what's really great about this is it's so smooth to work with and it sets up in the refrigerator pretty well and this is me cleaning my container <laughs> so I just take the cool whip and I push it out to the corners and once you get it touching the bowl it won't really come up with the cookies um, anymore. So then I just make it nice and smooth as possible, which is kind of hard, but you know, do your, very, do your very best. And I'm showing you this in a clear bowl, so it has that, uh, that trifle effect. But when you serve it as dirt in a flower pot, obviously it doesn't make a difference that the layers look perfect. Um, now I'm taking another third of the cookies and i um, going to sprinkle it um, just evenly over the top of this layer and I'm just going to repeat um, with the remainder of the cookies all right uh, in the food processor okay so now I go back with my hand and I just move some cookies around because if you are doing it in a clear dish for a trifle type of presentation you want the layers on the outside to be um, like that you can see it so you want to make sure at least you get it out to the edge um, so then we're going to go ahead and once that's all even as possible we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in the last remaining layer of the cream cheese mixture and again, follow the procedure of pushing it out to the edge. But like I said, I told you, if you don't put this in a clear container, what it looks like in its layers isn't necessarily important. Um, this is just because I'm doing the presentation in a clear container for you all. All right. And this is just a giant um, Rubbermaid. Um, 
but they have a name where you can put the seals under there. I don't remember, but um, <laughs> these are uh, these are some of my favorite bowls that I used to have in New York. Um, so then, yeah, every last drop, right? This is not the cooking channel. We make sure we get every last drop of ingredients because we don't waste and we don't have anybody to do our dishes. Ah, I should teach how to clean off a rubber spatula, right? <laughs> All right, so once that is in there, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the procedure where we push the mix out to the edge. And you can see there, I accidentally pulled up um, some of the cookie with the cream cheese, but it's actually not objectionable, like I said. Now, some of recipes, they mix some of the chocolate crumbs into their pudding mixture. Like I said, some use chocolate. Um, depending on your tastes and what you like. But this is the combination that I love the best. And to me, this will always be our classic um, dirt recipe. Now, this is why we wash our hands constantly because we use our fingers that God gave us, the utensils that God gave us to make sure we get every last drop of pudding off of the rubber spatula. <laughs> and now we're gonna take the remainder of our cookie mixture and we're gonna put that on the top um, I had a couple of like big pieces of cookie left over just for some reason, I guess, because the sometimes you know the mixer is kind of small, so I just laid them on the um, on the one layer because somebody will get a surprise. It'll be okay, um, but the pudding mixture will sort of soften the cookie up a little bit, so it makes it really good. And me, all this stuff is just the best. I just couldn't believe how easy it was when my sister told me. Now with the top layer, and if you don't want to do a third, a third, a third, you could do like a third, a fifth, and, and the rest on the top so that you get a nice thick layer of dirt. But as long as you've covered all the cream cheese with the cookie crumbs, it will look like dirt no matter what. So what we had was the rest of what was in the Cuisinart, and then I blended some leftover from the middle batch. Um, and that's what we're just going to use to make sure we get a good, nice coating. And then of course you could use your hands to spread around to the edges, make the even layer. Um, you can also shake it a little bit, that kind of helps as well. All right, and make sure you get every last drop of cookie because that's the best part. All right, well there are all the parts are the best parts. I think the combination too as well is really what makes it um, fantastically wonderful. And then here's the hardest part about this entire recipe. You need to put in the refrigerator. <laughs> Now technically you don't need to refrigerate it. It just is better refrigerated. So I just wanted to show you guys that you can put artificial flowers in here. I have been to parties where I've put this or triple batch in like a long flower pot, uh, like a window box. We've bought a brand new winter window box for it. We're not gonna store it in there for a long time so you don't have to worry about BPAs or toxic chemicals getting in your food because it's really just for an afternoon. Um, but you want to do is you want to dig straight down. <gasps> Look at all the beautiful layers. Look at all of the beautiful layers. Now I'm sure you guys have seen this for Halloween turned into a um, graveyard. But we always traditionally in my family like to serve it in a flower pot with artificial flowers in it. You just buy some artificial flowers, you leave them in the bunch, you wrap the base of the bunch in plastic wrap. Stick it right in the middle of the flower pot, and that's it. So I hope you really enjoy this super simple recipe, um, no baked dirt. And if you try it, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in there as well. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with friends and family. Anybody that might be interested in learning how to make dirt or any of its forms. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.